either of these values to the complete exclusion of the other. Hello. Oh, what a great uh, thing to come in on. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yes, so welcome back, everyone. Um, we're going to go and uh, switch over to an interview with Evan Minto of Azuki Manga. This is an online manga service, so if you're looking to uh, uh, read manga and have access to a lot of things. It's a really neat model, actually. The idea is um, kind of like Crunchyroll, where you you know pay a subscription for access to everything. That is their model for manga, mm. and they have contracts with a bunch of different people to have a lot of different manga available to you, which allows you to kind of broaden your your scope. Um, and from a, uh, from the perspective of folks who like have a lot of print manga, like th this is not a print is dead. You know, perspective. It is a hey, I want to read more manga. Here's a, a a relatively inexpensive way of kind of broadening my palette. So really cool there. And um, let me go ahead and switch over to that panel. Full disclosure: potato quality on the video here, as I recall. Mm -hmm. um, it just did not record it at, at a very high uh, quality, but it should work. So um, here we go. And Minda. Thank you so much for being part of this. Really appreciate you taking some time to be part of. On con, um, Evan, you can just go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, thanks so much, Brent, for for having me. My name's Evan Minto. I am, uh, uh, I guess the the headline thing that I am these days is uh, the co-founder of Azuki, A Z U K I. Uh, we're at, at uh, our URL is azuki.co, and we are a digital manga subscription service, uh, and we've got over two hundred series. We make it easy for you to stay up to date on uh on your your favorite uh in the latest chapters of your favorite manga uh and yeah i'm excited to to talk about that i am a co-founder as well as mark i had like head up marketing and licensing and a bunch of other things we can talk about all the different hats that i wear um and in addition to that i do some other stuff i'm a podcaster about anime manga and video games write for a couple uh outlets anime news network or taku usa stuff like that Oh, cool, cool, yeah. awesome. Um, love to get into that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's let's I guess let's get started with um, uh, Azuki specifically. So um, how did Azuki get started? So uh, our our CEO and co-founder Abbas Jaffrey uh, is a friend of mine from back when we worked together at Crunchyroll, and uh, basically Abbas was uh, was kind of like trying to find some new manga to read and was getting bas basically getting a little frustrated by like he wanted this kind of like easy digital like a crunchy roll like a netflix like this easy way to kind of just like explore a bunch of manga and uh, at the time found there just weren't really a lot of options uh for that and you know there's a lot of great publishers putting out great stuff but he, he had to really commit to like buying you know buying a bunch of books putting it on his shelf we both have our <laughs> bookshelves here so we have definitely done a lot of that um yeah and basically he was like you know we, we should try to build this like we're you know he's a software engineer and then he talked to me and a bunch of other software engineer friends of his from uh who who had previously worked at crunchyroll and we were like all right we we know how to build software we know the manga industry we can we can work this out um and that kind of you know started started a little bit uh casual just like sketching out ideas and then uh over about maybe a year year and a half we kind of like worked it out into something that like was more feasible as a business cool cool um so before we get too, too uh deep into azuki i'm curious like how did you get into well first how did you get into like crunchyroll oh crunchyroll uh was let's see i mean i had a connection that's usually very helpful for getting just a, a lot of jobs right uh so with Crunchyroll, I had just graduated college at the time. This was in 2013. And I actually had been, because I had been writing for my my blog, AnnieGamers.com, um, which is still going while I'm <laughs> at Azuki. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a contact, like a, pr a press contact uh, named Keith Kawamura, who people may remember used to be in a lot of videos for Crunchyroll back in the day. And he was just like my kind of PR contact there. And I was, I remember I was like applying for a bunch of jobs and like not getting ones that I wanted. And then I was like, I hadn't even, I think my mom, I, it's been a while since I told this story. I forgot about this. Like <laughs> my mom was the one who I think said like, why don't you like work in the anime industry? You do all this like writing about anime and stuff. And I hadn't even thought of it. I guess I had just thought of it as like something where it was like, 
oh yeah there's just like i'm a software engineer i'm not like a translator or anything like I, mm -hmm. how would i work in the anime industry i'll just go get a job <laughs> writing code somewhere and then i was like on crunchyroll and i was like oh they're a website <laughs> like people have to write the code for it <laughs> and then i hit up the back the my friend keith and yeah like basically got a he opened the door right and then i had to actually apply and do all the regular job stuff do coding interviews and then i moved to san francisco moved across the country from new jersey wow which was a big big deal yeah wow no kidding that's 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 a lot um but definitely for one of those jobs where it's it's you know almost like a dream job at least conceptually it's like i mean yeah okay. it was it was <laughs> you know had its ups and downs that's for sure but uh yeah. there was it was definitely like a really good uh, good crew there at crunchyroll Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, reversing a little bit further, like what got you into manga, anime, Japanese culture, all that kind of stuff? Uh, I have a not super interesting story there, but it's very relatable maybe for people my <laughs> age. I watched Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Probably if I do some archaeology, it was sometime around 1999. I think it was on Kids WB, so it couldn't have been mm -hmm. earlier than 99. And, uh, you know, that got me into... Japanese cartoons. Uh, before that, I think I was watching like Spider Man and stuff. Sure. Uh, and then, then led to like Toonami, a little bit of Adult Swim, uh, and that was kind of like. Then I was, you know, pretty into pretty into anime, making my own fan sites and things like that. And uh, yeah, being online is what kind of led me to manga. I remember kind of finding it as an anime fan and being like, "There's these comics, and they they're like the original version, and they're better or something." <laughs> yeah. And I had like read a lot about manga before mm. even realizing you could get it in officially mm. in English at the time. Like mm. you could just go to the bookstore and it was there. Um, and then I think yeah, like I think it was basically that it was that era of Barnes and Noble and Borders where there was a bunch of manga, and that's kind of how I first started reading it. Was I think I read. Dot Hack, Legend of the Twilight. Ooh, yeah. One Piece were there. like my two that I really started getting into. Yeah. Nice. Had you seen Dot Hack before? Man, these that's the part I can't remember. I don't yeah. remember the order. <laughs> uh, I might have seen Dot Hack, but I don't think I really watched much of Cyan. I might have played some of the games. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, remember, I, I definitely played those PS2 games like at some point, but it might have been after the manga. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I remember because I, I, I watched Sign and then went to the manga and read Twilight. And I was like, not what I expected. <laughs> it's pretty different, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like a, definitely a different vibe. Yeah, which is uh, and which is a lot of the fun of manga is that you you come to either okay, this is where it all came from. I see that, or wow, like this is this spinoff or this other thing that kind of kind of yeah, you know, right, right, a fun. Yeah, I mean, Sign is like a big media mix property where like. Mm -hmm. It's not about like what's the original. It's all just a big <laughs> network of different dot uh, yeah dot hack stuff. Yeah, uh, which is uh, which is a lot of fun and pretty pretty unusual for the time, um, which is really cool. Um, so let's 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 bring it back to to Zuki. Um, so you decided to get together and um, build this site. How did you build that initial like portfolio of manga? Like, how'd you go about you know getting the, the content itself? Uh, so a, a chief thing to know about like our, our current content on Azuki is that uh, at least a, as of as of our, this recording right now <laughs> is uh, we all of our manga is is licensed from English distributors. So wow. what we do is we talk to uh, publishers that are releasing this stuff in English already, either in print or in digital. Uh, well, definitely it has to be digital. Like we're not mm. we don't have any stuff that's where we're the only digital mm. version. Right. So it. The, they might release it in digital only or digital and print. Mm -hmm. And we basically just emailed a bunch of people and said, Hey, we're starting up this thing. We want to put your manga on it. You know, we'll, we'll help you make more money from these series. It's another distribution channel and got some bites, got some people who weren't interested. Um, but the, the bulk of that, I mean, like a, a majority of the series on our service are from Kanacha, the mm -hmm. U S branch of Kanacha. Um, mm -hmm. so they were very generous with their their manga they have a lot of stuff that they have the rights for subscription like streaming uh distribution for mm -hmm. and so they they worked with us to get those on the site so that was basically just i had worked with kanancha before as a freelancer um uh, doing web development for them mm -hmm. so i i knew all the the folks in their san francisco office pretty well and uh we just kind of started talking and you know i kind of did the intro there that's how that 
got started and that was where we got like the the first big batch of content and then the other batch of content we had at launch was from kaiten books who had launched maybe two years before we did uh and they had a you know much smaller collection of stuff but they were like a brand new independent publisher and uh i just i had been following them and thought what they were doing was cool so i i talked to them and we kind of found we had a similar you know kind of startup y <laughs> vibe going on and we we got along really well and we were like all right cool let's kind of like try to try to help each other out here yeah that's really cool um when you're working with a company like kadancha is that something where it's like where you come to them um saying i want this title or is it more along the lines of you know um uh, wanting to like pick and choose from among the titles or are they more like here's what we have available like how does that work yeah that's that's something we kind of had to learn a little bit as we went and uh the the way this works kind of across the board is it's it's all about like which rights the the publisher has right and so in this mm. case we're not a publisher we're like a, almost more like a storefront right we're a okay, distributor yeah. that that they're working with not even i mean distributor is not the right term in, mm. in print it's closer to being like a store where like a vendor is the term that, that they yeah. use. Uh, so they are the ones negotiating back with Japan for the, the rights and the, the typical rights that you'll, you'll see here would be the, the print rights, the ebook rights, and then separately the streaming rights, which is to like not have someone download an ebook or, you know, individually mm. purchase an ebook, but have it part of a streaming catalog, like a subscription catalog. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So, with Konancha and with basically everybody, it's all just about, do they have permission from Japan to put this on a streaming service? Mm -hmm. uh, and so with Konancha, it was basically like, well, they, they know already what they have permission <laughs> for, right? And they might add things or whatever, but like uh, we, us requesting stuff, which we have, I mean, we have done, uh, mm -hmm. that's not like, you know, not revealing any big secrets there. Sure, yeah, yeah. But if we request something, they need, if it's not already in their list of stuff that they have permission for, they need to go back and ask, right? And like, we, and with other publishers who don't have as much experience with streaming services, like for everything, they needed to go back and ask because they had, didn't have anything. Like we we were the first streaming partner for some of our publishers, so they had to go wow. back to Japan and be like, "All right, we put this out in ebook, but we got to ask you now about this other thing that we're trying to do." Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So. I imagine it's different like with Kadansha because as kind of an arm of the Japanese company, they can more come back and say, you know, um, um, you know they don't have the same like, contractual situation that another company might have. Um, is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're still, uh, yeah, it's, I think it makes certain things easier and I wouldn't speak for them, but I think sure. in general, with because there's a couple companies that are like that mm -hmm. um that are you know subsidiaries of japanese companies um mm -hmm. i think it makes certain licensing things easier but they they still have there's still contracts and there's still gotcha. sometimes you know folks in the japanese licensing or editorial offices who will have restrictions that folks have to abide by in like the u.s branch it's uh when you get that yeah. big it's kind of still uh <laughs> you're still almost you're two companies negotiating mm -hmm. even though those two companies are part of one company <laughs> interesting interesting yeah. i would have known that that's fascinating but um, i don't want to speak for them like there might sure. be i don't yeah. i haven't worked in that exact yeah. environment yet, yeah so. and and i'm sure every company is different too yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> cool and every um, every series is sometimes different right so. sure yeah um yeah, i mean you, you hear you hear stories of of uh you know well you know, this series, they're going to allow this on this, but not this because they want this over here and whatever, mm -hmm. and, you know, they've made a deal for, you know, releasing this for some, because of some special event or whatever. So yeah, I can imagine it gets very hairy very quickly. Yeah. Wow. Um, so for a, not that there's such a thing as like a typical manga licensing process, but for a sort of average manga, what's kind of your process there? Is it something where, um, um, you know, you identify to your eternity and you go and say, oh, you know, we'd love to get you to your eternity. Or is it more just kind of working with them to say, hey, you know, um, uh, we see your catalog. We want to work with you kind of figure out what's going on. Is, is it more kind of push or pull? Uh, it's with with the the arrangements we have with English publishers. It's mm -hmm. the latter than mm -hmm. the one that you described, where it's more about us kind of coming to them and saying, we want to work with you 
mm-hmm. the publisher, right? And then we say like, well, what, what do you have the rights to? What can you get the rights to? What kind of arrangement mm-hmm. can we work out? Um, I can go into more, more detail on that, but it is like, yeah. it's not really like a per series request okay. because mm-hmm. um, it's just not, I mean, that's the way it works when you talk to Japan. It's not the way it works when you're, you're work, talk, working with someone like who's already distributing something in English. Gotcha. So basically we would, with any of these publishers, we would just kind of similar to what I described with Kodansha and, and Kaiten, we just send them an email. Sometimes if it's, you know, if, if I know someone there, I can like do an intro, but it would, might just be a cold call, like, mm. you know, all right, hi, <laughs> we're from Azuki. Maybe you've never heard of us. Let's start talking. Mm. And, uh, then we would just go back and forth a bit and kind of like you know, try to figure out, well, what, what do you have the rights to? Like, what, what are you even able to distribute, uh, on a streaming service? And then like, what are the the terms that we're offering? And there's a bunch of different things there, right? Like what, what they need, what we need. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is like where it gets very, very technical, but the kinds of questions that have to be answered there is like, uh, the big one is money, right? So how does anybody get paid? Uh, and usually that's through uh, through a revenue share agreement. So in our case, and we're pretty transparent about this, like the way it works is, uh, you pay a subscription to Azuki and then, uh, a proportion of that, which can depend a little bit, depending on like, you know, just what, what we work out with different publishers, but, uh, a proportion of that, of your subscription gets paid out to publishers based on what you read, which is pretty cool. We're, uh, we think that's like a, a very fair way to set it up. So if you yeah. need more of one series, that publisher gets more of your money. Cool. Um, and so, you know, we kind of talked to them about that, what the percentage is and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, there's also something called the minimum guarantee, which I can get into just mm, part of that. Yeah. Um, there's like things like how long are the series available for? What countries are they available for? There's obviously like working out what series are contained in that like package that we're licensing from them. Mm. And yeah, and then they often have to take all that back to Japan and say, all right, these are the terms. Does this work? Are we allowed to do this? You know, and Japan has to decide if all that is going to make them enough money. Yeah. Um, so that can get that, that part can get a little gnarly, but we don't do that part. Right. So we're just talking to the English publisher and then they tell us if they got permission to do it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's. That's how that stuff works uh, pretty yeah. much with, with everybody we've worked with. It's some version of that. Sometimes it takes, you know, sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it takes like a week if they're really wow. streamlined and they've <laughs> usually, if they've worked with another publisher or another uh, service before, it can be like really quick. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah we have a, we've done this before. Blah, blah, blah. Done. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so what is a minimum guarantee? Sorry. What is a minimum guarantee? Ah, so. There's the idea of royalties, right? Which is paid like kind of per transaction. And in our case there, it's like a revenue share agreement where it's like a percentage of your, your subscription. Mm-hmm. Uh, a minimum guarantee is basically that we pay, if we're the ones paying the minimum guarantee, which we do in this case, we pay a block of those royalties up front. So it's not a separate licensing mm-hmm. fee. It's like we are paying the royalties early. Okay. And we, we, we never get that money back. Right. Mm. So the idea is it helps reduce risk for whoever is licensing out the content. So if the series flops, nobody reads it. Right. Or like if Azuki went out of business or something, like no matter what happens, like they've got that minimum already in their bank account. Mm. And then they just get like the royalties on top of that. Um, but the key thing is it's, it's money we would have already paid. Gotcha. not like an additional fee on top of the royalties. Um, mm-hmm. So it's obviously, you know, better for us to have a lower minimum guarantee, right? Just a less money you pay up front, but uh, it's a lot more fair, basically. I don't know about fair is not, not the right word, but it's just right. like, you know, if a series does well, it's kind of like, oh, we pay some money early, but at the end of the day, it's the same amount of money. It just helps the publisher feel more confident in the relationship. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's really cool. It's really interesting. Um, And that's really common in manga. It's like, I mean, I don't know the details of every publisher, but my understanding is basically every, every contract has that in manga. Gotcha. Cool. Um, I'm just, I'm thinking a lot because I remember reading a thing on ANN about how when 
uh, anime companies are licensing for like DVDs and so forth. It's more of a, you know, um, we're paying a fee plus, you know, like a yearly something for the license for this thing. So it's, it's much less, you know, per unit kind of a thing. It's like, no, we're paying $10,000 up front plus whatever for mm. a seven year license for this thing. Um, and then, you know, whatever money you can make on it, awesome. Um, but with the revenue share, that kind of simplifies that whole thing because it's just, here's a percentage and just, you know, there, there's some, there's some amount of that, that that's going to you up front, but it's still all just part of this kind of percentage. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah, like I said, we really like the idea of the revenue share because it's like, uh, compared to some other subscription services that have some things that are a little bit less fair than that. Um, yeah, this is a way of making sure that like your readership translates to your financial support for publishers and creators. And it's like, I think it's just easy for, for publishers to understand. It's easy for fans to understand like how they're supporting creators. Yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome. Um, um, what kind of like, um, um, not restriction of licensing, but like, um, I can imagine, like, do you, do you get into any, um, sort of um, questions or negotiations around like how long something can, can be on Azuki? Like, is there some five year, seven year kind of, you know, deadline we have to renegotiate or whatever? Um, generally, we, we don't have a ton of stuff that has like any, any strict, uh, you know, you know, stuff that needs to get taken down after a certain amount of time, but it's definitely possible. Uh, sure. I wouldn't rule it out in future arrangements if it, sure. if it comes to that. Um, but a lot of them, yeah, it would, it's, it's kind of like we would, uh, there's a term to the contract, but, uh, I, you know, it's kind of implied that as long as everything's going good, we would just kind of re up the contract for the next set of time, as opposed gotcha. to like a hard, you know, this has mm -hmm. to disappear after this amount of time. Gotcha. Uh, but that's the sort of thing that definitely, you know, it, it's come up. It's the kind of thing that can happen <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, no, I just I just say that because we we we've, we've had that question in the past about anime specifically of you know mm -hmm. why is Funimation doing a fire sale on this this series because they can't sell it anymore like it's it's you know their right. license expired so it's nice for something like Azuki to have a uh, you know obviously some pressure for some series but not you know everything has this hard date. Right. But uh, again, I think it's, it's important to keep in mind that because mm. we're acting sort of as a vendor here, mm. uh, it's, you know, like there's not really a big reason to, to yeah. take stuff off, but mm -hmm. the publishers we work with, they uh, might have a contract with Japan that expires, right? So right. if they lose the rights to it, our relationship is with them, not with Japan. So if they lose the gotcha. rights, then they <laughs> would have to request that we take it down too, right? <laughs> Gotcha. Uh, but I hope that, you know, hoping that doesn't happen. I think it's, you exactly. know, pretty unlikely with Kodansha and, uh, you know, hoping for the best for all of our other publishers. Totally, yeah. totally. Speaking of Japan versus America, how do you deal with like regions and that whole sort of ball of wax? Yeah, well, uh, something I didn't mention when I introduced us is Azuki is available globally, asterisk except Japan, just for <laughs> a common thing there. Yeah. Um, I'll yeah explain what that is like why that is but but mm. yeah we're we're really proud to be available globally we're only in English right now but you know if you can read English you can read it anywhere in the world uh, except Japan the reason for except Japan is kind of obvious it's just uh, publishers typically don't want to uh, compete with their own mm -hmm. Japanese publications of the series so they'll they'll say and that's a restriction from the publishers we work with, the English publishers. They are being told, like, sure. no Japan. And so they have to right. kind of pass that down to us. Mm -hmm. We do work with one or two publishers who don't have the no Japan restriction. But currently, wow. Azuki is is uh, no Japan just because it's simpler. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. That's really cool. Um, is that, like, part of your... Um, what you say to the publishers when you go and say, Hey, FYI, like it seems like a selling point. Yeah. Yeah. We, we do bring it up. Uh, and I mean, I wouldn't rule out, like we might end up working with publishers who have certain region restrictions in the future. That's kind of just the way it works, but sure. we as a service are available globally and we, you know, aim to everything we get, we aim to get it globally. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So let me ask from a technical perspective. Um, um, and this may be a question that you can't answer because of the whole technical thing. Um, is Azuki, I mean, 
I would assume that because you're set up to, to lock out Japan, it would be built so that if you needed to in the future, you could say, oh, this is not available in Sweden. So we can kind of take care of that. Um, uh, like how, how, how much have you as software developers kind of built in some of that stuff ahead of time? Or is it more like, you know, once we get to it, we'll get to it. Uh, I actually, I will just say, I don't know because while I okay. do, while I am a software engineer on Azuki, I didn't build that part of it. And I don't okay. remember what part <laughs> of it is built right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. sorry, this is my software engineer brain. Going. Yeah. Yeah. But I, um, I, I work, uh, on the, the website. That's my, my main area. So, uh, we have restrictions that are a little further back into the back end of it. Uh, but I don't know, I wouldn't want to speak for exactly what those, what those are, sure. but yeah, we, we would certainly be able to make sure that they work for, you know, if we had to restrict some particular content in Sweden or something. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Makes sense. Cool. Um, what's so one of the questions, you know, I get a lot is around kind of the, the money side of things. How much can you talk about kind of just ballpark figures? Like how much does it cost to license the manga? Yeah. It's definitely an it depends answer, and I couldn't yeah. tell you. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I could technically tell you, but I shouldn't tell you <laughs> yeah. like specific numbers for anything. Sure, no. But um, I think what people are thinking of when they ask that question is like, what does it cost to license manga from Japan? Which I can't mm. speak to because of yeah. like our current relationships are all with English publishers. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I can tell you it can in our case sometimes cost like nothing other than a rev share in, in some cases, oh, nice. right? Uh, yeah. And then in some cases it also has a, uh, has a minimum guarantee associated, which can really like significantly vary to the point mm. that like a number I give you might not even be useful. Cause it totally depends on the, um, on the like relationship and the particular series being offered and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but, but, you know, it could, it could just to give you some kind of idea, it can get up into a, like a hundred, 200 per volume, okay. but gotcha. we've seen lower than that too. And I'm, I'm sure higher than that exists as well. Sure. sure. Uh, and what I am aware of on the, on the licensing from Japan side is that like, a minimum guarantee could be in the low thousands, but again, okay. like, I think it's going to range a lot depending on whether you're talking about like a tiny little unknown series, or if you were trying to license like a Shonen Jump series or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's per, vo per volume. Often it's per volume yeah. for oh, okay. Interesting. Stuff. That's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that makes a lot of things make a lot more sense now, but it's per volume. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And yeah, um, I mean, a lot of it's, I have not really seen or heard too much about like just straight up fees. Uh, sure. It's usually, usually it's a minimum guarantee in everything mm -hmm. I've like seen or heard, uh, but mm -hmm. fees can get introduced when you're talking about like additional stuff on top. So yeah. like some kind of exclusivity arrangement can sometimes come with a fee. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. Interesting. Um, what would you say is the most difficult part of like, of running or otherwise, you know, working on a Zuki? The most difficult part? Well, I mean, licensing is what we keep talking about. <laughs> That's the big one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think like with us, because we're a subscription service and it's, you know, there's a couple, there's a couple of places doing, doing cool stuff with subscriptions right now, but it's still mm -hmm. relatively new. And publishers are, you know, including Japanese publishers are a little, still a little hesitant, I think, still figuring it out. And so mm -hmm. like, that's a big challenge is trying to really like sell, you know, that, that we've, we've seen the success of these services and like helping build audiences for series and, and attract fans who would otherwise maybe be reading on a pirate site or something, right. And like expanding the audience. But, uh, I think it it's new and so it can be a little scary for publishers and that's been, that's definitely been a bit challenging. Um, I think the other thing for us is we're a really small team. I've tried to emphasize this in a couple <laughs> places because I think people, when we started, thought we were like a big operation, but Azuki <laughs> is, is five people wow. doing everything, building the website and the apps, doing all the marketing and the social media, the licensing, like all of that stuff is just five people. Um, 
So it's uh, definitely like a lot of different hats, a lot of work, a lot of like trying to juggle that. So that's, that's definitely challenging. Understand that. Wow. Um, um, how do you manage that work? Like that, that seems like a lot to kind of keep track of. Yeah, we've been learning and a, little, a lot of like, you know, weekly looking back and being like, did this process work or not? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and trying to figure out kind of like where to, where to put responsibility. And I mean, like one of the big things we, we did early on is just like, make sure every kind of area of responsibility has like a point person and sometimes one person is multiple point people so like i am the licensing and marketing director which okay. really should be two positions mm. at a company mm. with more people <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah so that's like a big thing is just having kind of like a person who can make a call on something when when we need to make a decision and yeah i mean i don't know it's a big complicated question yeah. Like how, how do you handle that? Uh, how, yeah, we currently handle it. We, we do a lot of like kind of very hardcore, uh, planning and prioritization of being, you know, there's only limited amount of time. So sometimes it has to be mm -hmm. like, I don't write any code this week cause I have to focus on licensing. Mm -hmm. Right. And then like, maybe I write more code next week and then the licensing stuff gets put to the side and like trying to kind of like push and pull those depending mm -hmm. on what's most important week to week. Gotcha. Um, so that prompts another question. Like, what, what does your day look like? Like, is it mostly answering emails? Is it, is it more coding? Um, or does it just like very wildly day to day? Um, or like, uh, do, do you have particular habits where you're like, I got to make sure this gets done every day? Yeah, it gets, it varies very wildly. One of the few mm -hmm. things that's like been a bit of a habit for a while is like just checking the analytics every morning. That's, mm -hmm. that's one thing. It's just like, check, you know, what was our, what was our, user count yesterday and uh what you know series are popular right now on azuki mm -hmm. but other than that i mean it it varies very widely like today i didn't write any code for example um i just did like emails and a bunch of google docs and things like that it's a lot of a lot of google docs we have like so many google docs <laughs> 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 and spreadsheets and things um yeah i mean that's uh, it's not a ton of meetings cause we, we have like a discord channel. And so we are constantly talking on there. Um, yeah, I think like the weekly schedule is a little bit more stable. Mm. Um, we, we put out a newsletter every week, so I will like put that together every Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, we have some kind of habits like that, but a lot of it for, for me. And I think for the rest of the team too, just like totally varies depending on like what the priority is this week. This gotcha. week I am sending a lot of emails. Like <laughs> two weeks ago, I was writing a lot of code. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so let me ask this. If, if you were to like go back in time to like the start of Azuki, like is there any advice you'd, you'd give yourself with the benefit of, uh, of experience? Uh, you know, like I'd probably change some of our feature priorities in the apps early <laughs> on. Uh, I, th I think we've, we've landed at a pretty good place and we've recently put out a bunch of cool like discovery features and things, cool. but, uh, I think early on, you know, there's just, this is the way it works when you launch an app or three apps as we did, we're available wow. on web iOS and Android and we launched on all three. Wow. So like we made some decisions about what was most important to have in there at launch and you very quickly learn like what people's actual priorities are once you put it in front of users. So, yeah. uh, yeah, there were some, especially I think around the reader, there were like some features that we later were, we were, people requested and, you know, in retrospect, it's like, ah, maybe should have put in a little extra time to get those in, like at launch in, re you know, if I had a time machine knowing like, that's what people are going <laughs> to yell at us for, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but people are going to yell at you. There's, you can't, you can't have everything at the beginning, especially not with our team. So, it, you know, it was a balancing act of like, okay, what do we need? And then what can we like learn from and add later? Like once we get feedback and once people tell us, Hey, we need this and we're like, got it. All right. We're working on it. We're going to add that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Um, uh, you know, there, there's, yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand that software development is can't, is isn't just like pressing a button. Like there's a mm -hmm. lot of work involved in all these sorts of things that so you've got to prioritize and, you know, 
you know, if we build everything, then it'll be done in six years. So we got to right. kind of yeah. pick and choose. At a certain point, you have to accept that you're just going to get like, you're going to get negative feedback sometimes because you don't have the feature that people want. But at least now you know that people want that feature. You have, you don't just theoretically think they want it. You know they want True. it because they're asking you for it. And then you can go build it. Yeah. <laughs> and we've, uh, we, I, I've been really proud of that. We've been doing a lot more because once we, you know, the early, early on, we were still figuring out some of our process, but we've gotten a bit better at that. And more recently, we've been, I think doing a, a much better job of like pushing out kind of like little test versions of features and just, uh, you know, asking users for feedback and being like, all right, does this work? Well, what do you want? What do you want? Right. And then like building on those when, when we see that there's like interest and people are using them. And, uh, I hope people like that. I, you know, we're trying to be pretty yeah. responsive to what, what fans are looking for. Have there been any, any surprises in that process of things people requested that you didn't expect or that worked un, un, unexpectedly well or whatever? Oh, that's a good question. I probably should have thought of that <laughs> off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, I th uh, yeah, I think like, like we launched uh, genre filters. We knew people wanted genre filters. That wasn't a big surprise, but I think like some of the features reveal other things that are surprising, like just mm. what, what genres people were clicking on was kind of like, oh. oh, I didn't exactly expect that. All right. Interesting. Like that's oh. what people are interested in. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's one that comes to mind. Uh, there's probably a bunch of other ones I'm not remembering right now. Sure. Sure. Has there been anything else about sort of the general sort of, uh, you know, history of Azuki that were surprises where you're like, oh, I didn't like, like that. I didn't expect, you know, Everyone's reading this one weird mystery, you know, manga or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that definitely hit us. Like, because there were series that we were pretty sure were going to be popular, right? So we have uh, we have the, the simul pubs, we have the latest chapters for like Eden Zero and the Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights mm -hmm. of the Apocalypse, which is like the sequel wow. series to the original mm -hmm. Seven Deadly Sins. Those are like, you know, you don't have to yeah. be a genius to look at those. <laughs> People are going to yeah. read like the new, not, it's not that new, but the, the yeah. new chapter of the Hiro Mashima sci-fi series. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were also surprised by like the, the popularity of, of stuff like Grand Blue Dreaming, which a lot of people read mm -hmm. on Azuki. Um, and I was a little less surprised by this, I think, but like a sign of affection gets a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, lots of readership. We have like a, a popularity ranking that you can see and like it, it tends to rank pretty well. Um, yeah, and those are like kind of, you know, a sign of affection is a romance and Grand Blue Dreaming is like kind of a, it's got, it's got some romance, it's like a slapstick comedy kind of thing. Uh, I just think like those are interesting, especially Grand Blue, because it's just not what you would expect based on like stereotypes of what's going to be the most popular manga. And like mm -hmm. Grand Blue Dreaming is very, very popular on Izuki and it's not like an isekai, it's not a fantasy, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And similar with uh, the Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting, which is a fantastic Ooh. series from Kaiten Books that we've been really happy people have been reading and enjoying. Uh, and we we put out those new chapters as uh, we actually put them out early. Whenever Kaiten puts out a volume, Azuki users get to read it uh, first. Nice. And we've, especially when a new volume comes out, we get like a ton of people reading it and, and it has an anime coming out. And it's just been, that's been also kind of satisfying, maybe a little surprising, I think, just because mm. it's not like, like I said, it's not isekai, it's not fantasy, yeah. but it's been satisfying too, to just see like, oh, cool. All right. People like this. Like people yeah. like this story. That's just about like a cool looking Yakuza guy learning to embrace his soft side and be a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see Azuki having sort of a, a house style evolving of certain manga that you guys are are looking for or interested in or kind of like, like trying to to shift it in a particular direction because right now we kind of cast a wide net so i mm -hmm. wouldn't exactly say that just yet but i i would say maybe maybe stay tuned there might be some okay. uh news in that department or maybe cool. there might have already been some news in that ah, department by the time that nice. this uh <laughs> this airs we'll see cool uh, but I think like one of the focuses for us, which isn't really like a genre focus or a house style or anything is like, we're really focused on like that new chapter experience of like logging in and getting the latest chapter of, you know, the latest simul pub chapter, but also even like we have some stuff from a, a comic publisher called Ablaze. We have two series called Kagaster and Crueler Than Dead. Mm -hmm. And those we've been releasing them like a chapter a week. 
Mm-hmm. And like that is, I think, a kind of at least a house style in terms of like the style of readership that we're we are kind of uh, really going for, which is like regularly check in and like read your your weekly manga chapters. Uh, whether you know that includes like brand new stuff from Japan or just like the stuff that we're releasing on Azuki Weekly, and yeah. that we definitely want to be doing more of that, and hopefully we'll have more of that in between this recording and when you are listening to it. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I- I'm sure we'll be throwing in chat like links to all the, all the cool mm-hmm. cool things. Um, that's 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 really neat, and it's it's and it's one of the things that we like about Azuki. When I came across it, I was like, oh wow, like like every type of manga I can think of is here. You know, if I want a romance, if I want action, if I want whatever, like there's there's really good representation across the broad spectrum of manga, which I really appreciate. And I think that's important for like a subscription service. That was something I really believed in when we started. It is not just like it's easy to read a bunch of manga, but that like having a subscription means like you've kind of already paid for all of this. And so it's it's really cool to have access to like a wide variety where you can just jump in and be like, I'll just give this a try. And you might try something that you never would have bought because maybe it's outside of your usual comfort zone. So like, you know, I think if you think of it as a publisher, you might be like, well, that's a that's a customer who never would have bought my book, right? But because it was like rolled into this subscription, they they gave it a try and then maybe you like it. Maybe you're like, wow, I didn't realize I was going to like, you know, Tokyo Tower Reba girls or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is really cool. Um, well, I, I want to make sure um, we, we don't go uh, too far over time here. So is there anything else you wanted to bring up or talk about? Let's see. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we we talked about it, but but recently, as of this recording, it'll be a little hmm. bit later by the time you listen to it. We yeah. did announce that we got uh, a five hundred thousand dollar investment from Y Combinator, which is a startup, nice. uh, in, uh, accelerator program yeah. in wow. San Francisco. So we're very proud of that, and and they've you know they've got a lot of advisors and stuff who have just been helping us kind of like fine tune how we're running the business and stuff. That is awesome. And yeah, we are definitely like that's a that's a fair amount of money that we're we're looking to put mm-hmm. toward more manga for everybody to read so excited for announcements coming for that uh hopefully again we're still still ironing stuff out so i can't like say what (laughs) the things are but we have some announcements planned cool for the next like month or two that should be out by the time you listen to this cool um yeah i think i would maybe just i don't know if this is the part where i just i've been shilling the whole time but where i like tell people where to go go for it yes please all right cool so yeah, uh, Azuki, A-Z-U-K-I dot C-O. Uh, so that is the website. And then we also are on the uh, iOS app store and the Google Play store. Read it on your, your phone, your tablet. Uh, you can also read it as a web developer. I have to tell you this. You can read it on the mobile web. Uh, so if, I don't know, whatever. For whatever reason you want to yeah. not, not download the app, you can do that too. And uh, importantly, that it's a web reader. You can read on the web. You can read on all three platforms. It's not just like a... a placeholder website with a link to the app that's that's dang impressive like you know i'm, I'm actually like that, that's a really cool feature yeah i'm very proud of that it's a full discovery and reading experience cross-platform saves your progress and everything so wow. definitely check us out there and uh i didn't mention mm-hmm. maybe i'm bad at my job marketing yeah. guy here but uh <laughs> the subscription the actual subscription is 4.99 a month uh cheaper Dang. than buying a volume of manga uh, mm-hmm. and you get unlimited access to everything on the site uh, and we have a 30-day free trial if you want to try it out and a reduced uh, price on the annual membership if you want to commit mm-hmm. to a year plus on top of that you want to try it out before you do any of that we have free chapters available for most series you can read with ads still supports the creators that that money mm-hmm. goes back mm-hmm. to them um, and then uh, if you like it, we hope you do, then you can sign up and uh, start reading with our, our premium account. That is awesome. Um, yeah, no, follow, I, us, follow us on social oh. media too. We can put the oh. links in here somewhere, but we're Absolutely. read Azuki everywhere. Yes. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Yeah. Awesome. No, absolutely. Yeah. Go do that. Follow, do all the things. Um, um, yeah, it's one of the things I really like about the, about the service is that it's just... Um, Everything you think of about a, a manga service um, and like all the features that you have is like, yep, it does that. Like, yep, it does that. It's like, you know, it's like 
subscription makes sense. Your price makes sense. Like all, all the different, like, yeah, you know, I always have, yep. And if all, all those different pieces, like they're, they're all there. Uh, wow. I really appreciate it. Blushing over here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, uh, cool. Um, any last words? I think that's it. Thank you so much, Brent, for having me. You bet. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck in everything. We'll be keeping an eye out. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the con, everybody. Cool. Thank you. See you. Later. All right, and we are back with uh, uh, with Evan um, after that panel. Thank you so much for doing that. I'm going to make sure that we actually are getting um, audio from you because that's always an interesting question. Um, let's see if that I think that it, that, that is working. So, um, Evan, thanks for doing that panel. Uh, chat, are you hearing the the uh, the Zoom call? I just want to make sure everything is working technically because you never know, um, and it's always important to double check on these things. If not, I will just real quick also. I'll grab one more. Up, oh, no audio. All right, hold on. Uh, we will try something. Not that. Oh, actually, that might be it. Um, thank you very much. Um, we will try that one there uh, thank you so much for being test part of one this. two really three testing you testing position that hold on hold on um that should have an audio output interesting all right let me try changing this instead of that we want this over here uh <laughs> Do all the things. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, heard him for a bit. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's not it. I, I switched over to a different um, thing, and apparently that had a, um, that had something working. Um, okay, let's try that one second. We'll grab that, pull it back. Um, no, that, that should be it. We, we have that thing. Um, yeah, we will try the other one as well. Uh, transition there. Turn that on. See if we can get anything there. Not seeing that either. That's weird. Yeah, always the best part of, of a live stream is figuring out all this kind of stuff. Uh, what's weird is it is working fine on the other side. Um... Oh, yeah. Interesting. Um, all right, that is. Let's try that one over as well. Um, transition that one over. Interesting. Um, exactly. Um, okay. Weird. Okay, hold on, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna do all the things. We're gonna bring in all the things. What's frustrating is, I'm I'm sure I have this working on something else, um, but I can't switch to that without like um, destroying the stream <laughs> because that that is a whole that is the the non on con side of things. Let me turn that on. Um, we'll try that. See here. Could you try talking? That's not working either. All right. We'll try a different source. Try that one. Um, ah, okay. That might be it. Uh, give it a try. Test one, two, three. Okay, I think we got Evan that one. talking. Please tell me that it's working now, everybody. I think that worked. Uh, I'm I'm seeing spikes on my side. So You're good. seeing waveforms. Yes, are they, he they are hearing. We're waveforms. here. All right. Finally. Cool. Yeah. All right. Welcome. Apologies to everyone. Um, always technical issues. Um, so yeah, great panel. Thank you so much for doing that. Appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you for uh, for being a great interviewer. <laughs> You're very welcome. So, full disclosure, we recorded that panel a little while ago, and um, I've, so to start off, has there been any uh, updates to Azuki since we did that panel? Yeah, pretty big update. So we did a panel at Anime Boston. We actually also did a panel at Fanime the same weekend, which was fun. That was like our team was split, you know, on two coasts. Um, and at the Anime Boston panel, uh, I was running that panel, and I, I had the pleasure of announcing that, you know, we, we made a little bit of a change in how we license stuff. So we talked mm -hmm. about it in, your, in the interview, the, the fact that we, would, we license things directly from, like, uh, we would license them from U.S. publishers uh, as of, uh, well, as of, as of Monday, when we're going to be publishing our, our first thing uh, in, this, in this mode, we are not licensing directly from Japan Ooh. in addition to those titles from Kodansha USA and, and other publishers. Uh, so we have our first exclusive title that we licensed and that we translated. It's called Hikaru in the Light. We announced that at Anime Boston. Uh, it Sounds is uh, it's a series by Mai Matsuda. It's an idol manga about uh, chasing your dreams. It's this really dramatic, heartfelt, and funny series that is uh i will note it is i it's for idol fans and idol skeptics alike i think if Ooh. even if you're not the biggest fan of the idol genre i think it will appeal to people who uh, like any kind of story about someone chasing their dreams or like learning a, a passion uh you know stories about like musicians and artists and and even it has an element of almost like a sports manga uh so the the premise is uh, hikaru is a middle school girl who spends her days singing oldies in her family's bathhouse she's a little little bit of an oddball and uh, when she reconnects with her friend Ron, who's a former idol, Ron convinces her to try out for this, this competition called Girls in the Light. And it's an idol survival camp where uh, it, it's run by this like, kind of eccentric music producer who wants to change up the, the idol industry in Japan. And uh, they get tens of thousands of girls from around the country to compete. And they're sort of going to eliminate them one by one until they get down to like, the cream of the crop. And so it's a story about Hikaru and Ron both participating in this competition. And along the way, you meet all the other girls who are trying out, and they're all kind of have their, their own interesting, different kind of perspective they're coming from. Uh, and it's, it's great. It's really like about them growing and learning their, their craft. I got to say, from, from what little I know of the idol industry, that sounds pretty realistic. Um, like I, I can imagine there actually being... Uh, uh, you know, a, a competition weaning down 10,000 middle school girls, probably broadcast on, you know, uh, on Tokyo uh, uh, MBS somewhere. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's, a, it's really great. Uh, I'm a huge fan of like my Matsuda's artwork. Mm. Uh, she has this really charming Lovely. character design style. We have a free preview of chapter one that's up right now on cool. the site. You can go check that out. It's the first 28 pages. It's like an extended chapter for the first one. So we have like, mm. it's, Actually, I think it's about 40 pages total. So cool. we have the first 28 up uh, as a free preview. And then uh, on Monday, June 13th, in just two days, mm. we are launching chapter one for free, the full chapter for, for everybody. You can start reading there. And then we're going to have a new chapter every week uh, up until we catch up with Japan because it's you know it came out in 2021. So we're like a couple months behind Japan right now. Gotcha. But it comes out twice a month, and so we're uh, basically at like an accelerated schedule. So we're cool. going to catch up with Japan, and then it'll switch over to be a simulpub. So you'll get the latest chapters as soon as they're out in Japan. Cool. Uh, and premium users will, premium members will be able to access those chapters before anybody else. Uh, so we're really excited. This is like we put together a, a team of freelance translator, letterer, QC, right, and we're doing the production in house. Uh, so yeah, this is this is like the start of our journey as not just uh, a company that you know distributes other people's manga, but as a manga publisher in our own right. And we have more where that came from. We we're working on a couple more licenses. We also have a licensing survey that I will mm. try to. I don't. I don't have. It's a little hard for me to yeah. give you the link right now because we're doing a live stream. But sure. uh, if you check our social media, we have links to that. Cool. And we are we are looking forward to your suggestions. So Absolutely. if you've got. Manga that you want us to put out, definitely send that in. Uh, and I will say, I'm encouraging everybody, send me your weirdest pics. Because <laughs> we're not printing stuff, not at the moment, mm. right? And so potentially we might be able to release some stuff that other publishers might not be willing yeah. to do. So uh, yeah, if you got some some weird thing that you're like, why has nobody gotten this? Like send that to us and I'm not making promises, but mm -hmm. we want to hear from you and we'll see what we can do. Uh.
My one suggestion actually got licensed like in the past year. So oh, what was it? Um, Yokohama Kadashi Kiko. Oh, that's yeah, that was a big one. That was like a white whale. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Seven um, Seas got that right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely have to 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 pull back through stuff I found in in weird places. Um, yeah. And see what I can recommend. That's awesome. So yeah, so that's our that was like our really big announcement from Anime Boston. We yeah. also announced uh, two more kind of like follow up uh, pieces of of manga that we're releasing in the coming weeks. Mm. So uh, first up is uh, The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting Volume 4. Cool. Uh, so we work with Kaiten Books on this. It's, it's their series that they release in, uh, in ebook and print. And we have, uh, we have a setup that we call Early Access, where they provide us with the volumes uh, a week. Well, technically, they provide us with it more than a week beforehand. But we provide it to our premium users a week before the official release date on other platforms. And so cool. if you are an Azuki Premium member and you are a fan of The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting, uh, starting on June 17th, you will be the first people to read the latest volume of it. Just in time for the anime that comes hey. out on July 7th. Yeah. You get all caught up with the manga. Uh, and if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting by Tsukiya. It's a really sweet and funny sort of fish out of water comedy, a little bit of a dramedy. It has some, some l like less comedic and more heartfelt aspects uh it's about kirishima who's the right hand man of the sakuragi crime family and you know he's this this tough guy he's you know feared by all the local yakuza uh but he gets a new job from his boss which is babysitting the boss's daughter yaika <laughs> and uh you know kirishima is totally out of his element and also on top of that yaika is is not exactly like you know she's a little uh little shy and a little hard mm. for him to kind of build a rapport with uh, so you get a bit of comedy, a bit of drama, a lot of really sweet moments between Kirishima and Yaika. Nice. I think it's like definitely if you like Spy Family, this is mm. this is up your alley. It's that kind of uh, cool. story about you know sort of tough guy learning, learning, <laughs> you know finding uh, finding his soft side. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that comes out July seventh, oh, June seventeenth, sorry, mm. uh, and then the, cool. the anime is out on July seventh. And uh, if you want to catch up, we have volumes one through three available for premium members on Azuki. Awesome. Um, yeah, and uh, the other the other announcement, which I actually have to double check because I think we're going to be getting an exact <laughs> date on this soon. I don't think the exact date has been announced. So Starfruit is going to announce the, mm. the date for this, but uh, we so we have a series or a, a one shot from from Starfruit Books, this mm. uh, great independent manga publisher called the series is called When Pink Rain Falls, mm. and it's a boys love one shot about uh, about a young man who. Uh, is is really interested in flower arranging, and it's this like very short, sweet, kind of happy ending little story about him finding a kindred spirit at a local flower shop. Oh. Uh, and you know, fan, fans really took to it. The the artwork is great. It's by a an independent artist named Yoyu. Wow. Uh, so we announced at Anime Boston that uh, the the sequel. It's like the sequel one shot or whatever, because mm. it's not really like an ongoing series. Mm -hmm. But Yoyu has created a second a second chapter. Uh, that Starfruit is releasing, and so we announced that, that would be coming to Azuki. Nice. And so uh, I think in the coming days we are going to have the exact release date of that. But it's yeah. it's coming pretty soon to Azuki, and you can read the first chapter on Azuki. We I know uh, we if you check our, our popular carousel, it's in there. Like even though it's one chapter, a lot of people are reading it. It's it's really it's very very sweet, and it's our first and currently only boys love uh, series. But we would like to have more. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so that's that's coming soon. I think that covers uh, all the big announcements so far. Cool. We also do have an Anime Expo booth, so mm. if you are in or around Los Angeles, uh, definitely come out to uh, to Anime Expo. We're gonna have a booth and a panel. We'll cool. be at booth number five seventeen, and our panel is. I'm looking at my document here. Ten a.m. in the J.W. Marriott Platinum Ballroom, and we will have announcements. So also, Ooh. if you're not in Los Angeles. Look out on uh, the Monday of Anime Expo for some new announcements from Azuki, which we just heard back on some stuff that is now uh, it's ready for us to announce it. So that's good news. That's awesome. I remember yeah. attending uh, Funimation panels and having them say, so we just re-edited this slide deck this morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because, I have seen, <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen some crazy stuff. I've seen uh, actually unrelated to Izuki here and I won't name names but I did uh, I did MC a panel for an anime studio one time where we had practiced an announcement of a 
show and like a trailer we were going to show and then like bef right before I went on stage they were like oh we just heard back from Japan take that whole section out we can't oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the show got announced like two years later or something wow. postponed for some weird oh, reason it is uh, um, so that's really exciting um, going back to licensing um, uh, manga dragon from Japan yeah. um are you all currently focusing on um, recent releases, or are you looking to kind of go back to older, older manga anytime soon? Uh, we are, I would say we're currently focusing on recent releases, sure. yeah. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of older manga, and yeah. I would not rule it out. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends on the series and what sure. is... Uh, what we think we can we're not trying to sell books right but but yeah what we can sell basically what we what people will actually read because yeah. we want people to read them and, and subscribe and we have we do have a bit to surround so sure. yeah oh yeah totally, totally. certain certain old series are tough but you know yeah. there's there's stuff that works there's stuff that like you know you can find a modern audience for and sure. that's what we're interested in yeah absolutely well and, you know, for any service it's like you know you you you, you want to find um um I think especially for, you know for you all because you have the opportunity to work with these companies, you can bring forward these manga that are new that are that that, that can find an audience over here in America, um, as opposed to the ones that have been around for you know decades and people already know about. But you can bring over the, those those manga and kind of um, um, give the gift of that manga to to folks over here who might not have known known about it. So totally understood. Yeah. I'm. I would love to get some some retro manga, some like yeah. previously unlicensed retro manga. Sure, would be great to put yeah. out. Yeah, if we can get it. <laughs> yeah, um, which I'm sure is complicated. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, the I think the licensing for it, it depends on if it's like you know you're getting a Tezuka manga. It's pretty right. complicated. But yeah, it, it sort of depends there. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Um, that's really really cool. Um, Thank you. Do you have any sort of forecast on kind of the pace at which you'll be able to license that stuff is it going to be like you know um new title every you know every year every half year every month like what, what are you kind of aiming for in terms of like scope and scale of this sort of uh initiative we're looking to try quite a few series mm -hmm. like early on to kind of build up an initial roster but i would say to the people watching this right now, if you'd like more manga from Rizuki, please read the ones that we are releasing. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So please read Hikaru. Good point. Because that is going to help a lot with uh, justifying further expenses on new licenses. <laughs> uh, so we have some stuff we've already picked up, right? But sure. I think, you know, if stuff does very well, then we yeah. can kind of like leverage that into getting more series. And I'll also just say a little, little peek behind the scenes here. Mm -hmm. If the manga we license do well that actually helps us pitch them to pitch ourselves uh, to publishers okay. right so the more that you read it the more like kind of leverage we have to bring over more stuff for you makes sense yeah well, that's, that's, that's true with any publisher right like it's true sure. with print sales like if you support the publisher they have more ability to bring you more stuff mm -hmm. and it's one thing i like about azuki too is that um i think with a lot of of stuff and we talked about this a bit in the panel but that with a lot of folks it, it feels like you know it's hard to support a service because you don't know what impact that has. And knowing that Azuki, you know, you can see, you know, this this is the most popular one. This is the second most popular one. This clearly is having an impact. Um, um, mm. it, it gives people kind of the confidence of saying, no, I'm going to go read that here because I know that that's that's going to count towards something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you can expect. If I had to, I, I could yeah. try to give you a number here that yeah, I wouldn't yeah. really promise you, but sure. I would say, yeah, you might be able to expect, like, if, if we're successful, you might see six more series before the end of the year, okay. but it's gotcha. not, cool. that's yeah. nothing that's, like, signed, I'm just giving sure. you yeah, off yeah. the top of my head, yeah, sure. uh, we'd like to do more if, if things go really well, so, yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's really exciting, um, especially for, and that, like, that impresses me, you know, like, for, for a, for a new initiative like this, for, for... Um, an organization like Azuki, knowing that you can you, you can even like um, plan for that that like, that seems aggressive to me <laughs> to, to be able to oh it's it's aggressive <laughs> yeah it is it is uh, but you know we kind of need to be because we we mm. gotta we need to grow you know our subscription mm. base and uh, yeah we 
like that's that's as far as we see it that's like a big part of the way to do it it's i think we're we're definitely still focused on getting more stuff from existing publishers and building sure. out like that kind of back catalog mm -hmm. not even just back catalog because kadach also has simul pubs which mm -hmm. are very like we have a lot of people who read them on Azuki mm -hmm. and they're great and we'd love to have more from from Kupanacha, right totally. uh so it's like we definitely are keeping that up, but mm -hmm. but having stuff that like that we are bringing over for people, I think, is like really important yeah. uh, from a business perspective. But it yeah. also, it's I mean, personally, it's something I really care about, and I think mm -hmm. it's just like it especially makes me personally feel like like we're having a really positive mm -hmm. impact because there's manga that you can read because of us. Right? Yeah, but it's like yeah. it's available because we put in the work to bring it over and localize it. That's yeah. awesome. Have you seen any trends um, recently, especially like since since we recorded, of like um, like surprise successes with an Azuki of things like maybe you know folks were folks are introduced to through Azuki they may not have may not have otherwise things along those lines. Um, I think a lot of the the Glacier Bay and Starfruit titles mm. kind of fall in that category yeah. um, where we've definitely seen them kind of like because they're mixed in with these no offense to those publishers love those publishers yeah. but they're mixed in with these more popular titles sure. generally yeah. right Kodansha series just tend to have a higher readership than <laughs> yeah. this independent manga uh -huh. uh, and it's been really cool to see them kind of mixed in and some of them manage to you know crack into like mm. the top 10 most popular for the week mm. and it's like that's a pretty big deal for yeah. someone it's like a one shot by an independent <laughs> creator right like that's that's competing on the level with like Attack on Titan yeah that is yeah. awesome. Um, that's 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 really cool. Um, like I was saying in the panel, I think I'm, I'm I, I love in you know with the Azuki the model the the ability to have kind of that breadth of of, of exposure to manga mm. that you can go in going for the, the one thing you want and then oh why not try this why not try this um, is something yeah. that and coming from a, from a time when manga was really hard to get like I really appreciate that I was like I don't just spend you know 10 bucks on every single new manga I want to try out it's great that's the, I think I talked about it in the interview yeah. that's the pitch as far as I'm concerned it's like the, that ability to sort of have that's why we call it a manga cafe the mm -hmm. ability is like you sort of pay for your entrance fee and then you just you're sitting in the cafe and you pull something off the shelf and you just like try whatever you want exactly yeah. exactly it's great um, Do we have any questions we wanted yeah. to answer? Um, any any questions in the chat? Anyone want to throw anything in there? Um, oh, I will also, while mm -hmm. we're looking for questions, I will post. Yeah, go for uh, it. It's not going to get auto linked, uh, so I guess you have actually, to copy um, paste. Uh, paste it into the Zoom. In, in, in the Zoom. I'll, 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 oh, I'll, I'll, I'll paste it in. It. I can look at it. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'm going to post the, uh, the, or Brent is going to post for me. Yeah. The, I'm looking for the chat window here. Sorry. Um, uh, there it is. Yeah, uh, there we go the link to the official trailer that we made for Hikaru in the Light. We, uh, we got this trailer put together. It uh, gives you a sense of kind of what the, what the whole manga is about. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're very proud of this. Awesome. Very cool to be able to produce a trailer for our first ever license. No which, kidding. You know, that not is everybody really cool. is able to do uh, yeah. right off the bat. That's really neat. Um, what, so here's a question I have. Um, how do you find freelancers to work with? Oh, you know, that one's interesting. So we did just post a tweet asking for freelancers, yeah. right? So that's one way to do it. We got a crazy amount of responses. Cool. Uh, and we are still open to that. Please, you know, feel free to, you can send us an email at uh, localization at azuki.co. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, send us your resume and samples and stuff like that if you do translation, lettering, uh, QC, or cover and logo design. Now, that part sort of easy, right? Because there's a lot mm. of people looking for work. So mm. you, you put out the call and you'll get a lot of responses. Um, what was harder was finding people before we had announced that we were localizing manga. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we couldn't do a public call mm. without kind of spoiling the announcement. <laughs> so that one was a little tougher. It wasn't the end of the world because like we, we know some people. I basically just privately messaged a bunch of people I knew and said, hey, spread the word quietly that Azuki is looking to hire people and like let's find some people who, who are good and we did we, we had a pretty good set of um, candidates there and like honestly a lot of them we didn't you know we only used one translator one letterer for Hikaru but like 
lot of the other people we talk to are sort of in our back pocket. It's like, okay, well, we're going to have more series in the future, so we'll call you later cool. when we need more people. Cool. Um, yeah. Ginger in the chat asks, what's the most popular genre on Azuki at the moment? Um, I think the, the story basically everywhere, which is the story on Azuki, is like, you know, shown in battle stuff, uh, <laughs> tends to do pretty well. Uh, so you can see on our, uh, on our, like, you know, we have a carousel on the home page mm -hmm. and in the, the home screen of the apps that shows popular. And you can see like the stuff that tends to be popular is basically like the weekly Shonen magazine series mm -hmm. from Kodansha. So Eden Zero, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, uh, Shangri-La Frontier and mm -hmm. To Your Eternity. So those all kind of fall in that like Shonen action bucket. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like generally we have been a, we have seen like romance tends to do, you know, I think to be honest, it's not the same kind of numbers sure. as that, yeah. but, uh, but we, we have a couple romance series that let do pretty well. And like, you know, I mentioned Grand Blue Dreaming, A Sign mm -hmm. of Affection, which are very different kinds of romances, cool. but <laughs> they're. Yeah, no, I, I totally yeah. hear on that. I've, I've done panels on, on the manga industry in Japan and I'm like, here are Shonen Jumps, you know, uh, circulation numbers. And here's everyone else. <laughs> like, it just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, Shonen just outperforms, but, you know? But there's, you know, it, it's, it's not a rule. Like, some, yeah. there's other genres that break into, like, our, our popularity rankings, mm -hmm. um, cool. depending on the week. Uh, yeah, I think that's the, that's the story so far. There's cool. a lot of, it's, it's not always easy to see specific genres breaking out in, in sure. our current catalog, but yeah. Let me ask you this question about um, freelancing. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a particular aspect of freelancing that you think is like underrepresented? Where if somebody wanted to get into it, it's like no one seems to be doing a lot of this and there's a lot of call for this in the industry. I wish more people were kind of jumping on this sort of, uh, this sort of job or this sort of uh, task. I think I could... I mean, personally, because mm -hmm. I don't run the production for the, sure. the inside of the book, basically, right? So, you know, we're not printing a book, but I think yeah, of yeah. it as the inside of the book. So I'm not doing like, the, sure. I'm not hiring the yeah, translator. Yeah. We have another team member who hires the translator mm -hmm. and, and letterer and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I think generally, like, there's a lot of letterers out there okay. and a lot of people who can do some kind of QC, but of mm -hmm. course, you know, no, not, not saying that to make it sound like it's easy. Sure, yeah, yeah. QC person is still, you know, like, that's still a, an important skill. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think translators are can be tough mm -hmm. to find, um, you know, especially to find a really good one. And personally, as the person who manages the cover design, that can be Ooh. a little bit tough uh, to find. You can find graphic designers, you can find letterers who could double as a cover designer, uh, but you know, it's just not that many. You think about it. There's a lot of chapters of manga that you could be hired to mm. letter for. Right? Yeah. So there's like opportunities to get experience there mm -hmm. but there are just statistically fewer opportunities to design the cover for a series yeah. and so there's people who might be able to do it but you don't they don't they don't have relevant work samples mm -hmm. right like they're a talented designer but you you don't you can't see like well what does it look like when you design a manga cover mm -hmm. right because maybe they haven't done it before yeah so it's i've found it's like harder to find good cover designers um not to say they're i mean they're out there we sure. the cover designer we have for hikaru in the light is great arash yeah. mukal uh, he he created this awesome logo for it that we were, we were really happy with. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, it also strikes me. Um, I assume it's it's also a little more complicated for like a digital um, um, platform because I'm assuming you're doing multiple covers for like you know um, uh, portrait landscape or just kind of you know ads uh, things along those lines. Like, like you're doing a lot of different stuff. Good question. Good question. Uh, <laughs> what we currently do, we do basically cut a couple corners for mm. uh for the because we don't have to do there's certain things that a print publisher has to do that we don't right, right? if if in some hypothetical future we ever printed books we yeah. need to deal with that problem but we don't need a back cover for example uh, yeah right uh, we don't need a spine mm. Mm -hmm. those are things that you would usually pay a designer to make for you um what and what we have done is the cover designer created the volume one cover and the series cover people probably didn't notice this because they look very similar huh. but if you look at the hikaru uh, it might not be in the preview yet mm. but it'll show up in chapter number one you'll see like there's hikaru in the light this on the series page you'll see the cover and that mm. doesn't have a volume number that's like uh, the okay. series cover and then there's a variant of it with the volume number so those are like cool. two versions that we make and we will be doing 
full like English cover designs for subsequent volumes, even though it's released in chapter by chapter form. So when you hit volume two, you will see a an English variant of the volume two cover. Nice. Uh, and then for other stuff, like yeah, you were thinking, oh, for a digital platform, you need some kind of like landscape way of displaying it. To be honest. I just designed this. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm the sort of in-house marketing designer. Sure. So what I do is I take the logo design mm. and any key art we have and I combine them and I gotcha. make like a, it's not a cover, but mm. it's like a piece of art that we can use for marketing. It's gotcha. a key art. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah. And I, I can only imagine the number of different hats you have to, uh, to wear. <laughs> oh yeah. Everybody's wearing a lot of hats. It's, it's, uh, I told a story at our Boston panel uh that is pretty indicative mm. of how this works it's like i mean there's me right Do, mm -hmm. i've already introduced all the stuff i do so it's like design and web mm -hmm. development and brand managing hikaru and the light and marketing mm -hmm. in general uh at, but like one of the the funniest ones is the our like production manager who's basically the editor for hikaru and the light she's got mm -hmm. her fingers in the whole production mm -hmm. the you know making decisions on translation and lettering she is our ios developer She's like the person oh, who wow. the yeah. also the, the editor on this manga. Like that's the kind of uh, bootstrapping that we're doing mm. here. And that like might sound weird to people is like, oh, how can an iOS developer do that? But she's great at it. I mean, mm. she's, she's done mm. it before. She has experience with, with manga production. Mm. Um, she's great at both of them. <laughs> like that's what you need at a yeah. startup is you need somebody <laughs> who can kind of like really excel at multiple disciplines at once. That's cool. Yeah. Um, all right, one last question um, about translation, because we had actually a panel um, earlier at the con about like sub versus dubs and translation and so forth. How do you like evaluate or interview a translator to find out like how how good they are, for lack of a better term? Like, like you know, yeah. How do you figure uh, that out? That is a much better question for the the sure for yeah, yeah. Adele, the person I was just talking about, who actually like put together our translator test and all of that, mm. but. Um, we do a test is basically what it is. Okay. Um, we did do some interviews early on, mm -hmm. uh, just to, I think that's not exactly going to scale as yeah. we more translators, <laughs> but you know, for our first set of staff, we, mm -hmm. we actually personally interviewed them. But, uh, yeah, we send out a test to people to basically just see kind of how they translate. And mm -hmm. as you may know, translation is more than just the meaning, right? It's yep. also like their writing style, how they adapt it. So we give them like, uh, we, we give people, something to translate and then we kind of compare it against the um the official translation mm. or the translation that we expect to see and it there's not a right answer right but there's mm. like an evaluation of kind of like well how, how did what how did they choose to sort of solve this translation problem yeah uh so that's kind of like i mean the test is there partially just to figure out like what's their basic ability mm. as a translator mm -hmm. right we give them some challenging little bits so you know certain people might stumble on and see how they do mm -hmm. and then separately for different series different translators might be better fits which oh is interesting, yeah which don't necessarily always think about so like some translators i mean this is true of everybody on the production staff some people just enjoy working on certain things mm. or don't enjoy other things some true. somebody might be like ah, i don't really want to work on an isekai i think they're mm. boring or whatever mm. right uh, and then there's like certain translators who kind of just like certain types of translation. There's people who kind of like to be a translator and a researcher. Like they want to, oh, okay. yeah. they want to dig up a bunch of like other details and kind of combine them all together. If you think about like a manga, like, um, uh, like Saint Young Man is a good example of a mm. manga that like mm -hmm. has that level of, of research <laughs> beyond just translating. You oh have yeah. To also like pull up all these biblical references <laughs> and Buddhist scripture and combine them in there. So like some people kind of like that better and are a better mm. fit for that kind of work. Mm. And then some people are more just kind of, you know, more about, uh, you know, comedy or something, right? Yeah. They, they yeah. really excel at like translating jokes and keeping them funny in English. Yeah. That must be yeah. its, its own skill. Wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, I, I never thought about that, but it it is so true that you know, writing a shonen, shonen battle manga for you know, translating that for potentially years, like that is it's, it's going to have its own tone, its own flow, its own structure that you may or may not like compared to translating you know, um, you know very romantic flowery shojo, which is, yeah. it has its own kind of tone where it's like, um, I, I can totally see people being like, ah, this is for me, this is not. 
Yeah, or like you're translating like Nietzsche Joe, and it's yeah. like, okay, you got to be really good at like getting across a Japanese pun in a way that's still funny in English. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Um, cool. Well, thank you so much for being part of this and answering our questions and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'd we'll love yeah. to have you back at the Future On Cons, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, and thanks to the folks in the chat for. Yeah. Responding, I didn't totally respond to everything in there, but I did see some suggestions for things we could license. So thank you. I am paying attention. That will cool. Go on the list. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, and um, hope you have a great one. And uh, take care. Yeah, you too. Uh, thank enjoy you. the rest of the con. Thanks. Take care.